Hey guys, it's your girl Hannah B and welcome back to my channel for another video. So today's video is going to be something that I literally have pushed off and pushed off and pushed off for at this point almost two years. Um, and it is my experience working in the strip club story. Okay, so I have my notes. Okay, I got notes so I can <laughs> make sure that I do everything and cover every topic. And I'm gonna let you guys know what it has been like to work in a strip club. My personal experience, I have worked in a club in Atlanta and a club here. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys know what it was like. Um, so I'm not gonna tell you guys the club that I work here, but the club that I work here in Jackson, I worked at in 2016 for about three or four months and then it closed. And then the next summer I moved to Atlanta and I worked at, I actually worked in Peaches for a few months, maybe like two or three months, but I was a hookah girl. I was still part of my hookah job, but we were a contracted business. So anybody that wanted to sell hookah, that's where we went to. And so I worked at Peaches for like two or three months. And then after that, um, I went back to the regular service industry. And then I, when I moved back here, I actually got hired at our KOD. Um, and I decided not to work at our KOD because despite what Instagram shows, it's really not that busy, um, which is probably, I don't know. It didn't really seem like they had anybody working there either. So I mean, IDK had to really gauge that. I'm gonna start off with some like myths and like fact versus fiction in a strip club. Okay, so these are the facts. There are a lot of girls in there, depending on where you work at, there are a lot of girls. Um, you will be surrounded by titties and ass and, and vagina all day, okay? <laughs> that is factual. Um, Everybody that works there is not grimy. Everybody that works there is not creepy. Everybody that comes to the strip club is not creepy. You will have to deal with people that are a little disrespectful sometimes. Or, um, like I've never been called out of my name. I've never been harassed. I guess you can say, like I've never had any of those type of situations. I had, I have dealt with like just different types of people, different types of guys because you know, some guys come to the club with blood money with their friends. Some guys come to the club and treat like a regular club and they're just like dancing around and ordering food and drinks. And some guys are like, you know, the shyer, nerdier type. You know, they're clearly there to get the same experience everybody else is getting, but they're not as like, they're not like people, they're introverted, kind of not like people, people, you know. And so there is that. Um, I have only witnessed. I've only heard about one strip club. I've only heard about one stripper fight. I've only witnessed, I witnessed another stripper fight between one of our dancers, but she was at another club because our club was closed at the time. So she was at V Live at the time. So I saw that. And then I've only ever seen one dancer and one bartender get into it and it never escalated to the point that they got physical. So all the videos about people fighting all the time in the dressing room, usually there is a reason why people are fighting, but it's not, from my experience, it's not like all the time because there are fines for fighting. So if you make people angry enough to say, F it, they'll pay that $1,500 fine or whatever it is at their club to fight another girl or to fight a, a DJ or a dancer or whatever, then that means it's probably serious, serious or somebody says something super disrespectful where they can just like, throw it out the window it is a it is a quote-unquote professional environment you know what i'm saying like everybody pretty much treats everybody with some type of respect i haven't met anybody rude as far as like the staff outside of the guy who owns the place <laughs> at our particular club but i haven't met anybody rude you know as far as like security or the dancers are like all super nice or like the bartenders are nice everybody's nice other servers they're nice so I haven't met any rude people. I haven't had anybody tell me to use what I got to get what I need. You know what I'm saying? Like none of that crazy stuff, okay? Not saying that that stuff don't happen because it definitely does. 
um prostitution is like a huge thing <laughs> in a lot of clubs like you know people are going to jail for that people are getting fined like it's super serious when they find out about it a lot of the girls get fired if they find out that they're doing that type of stuff inside of the club you know what i'm saying so like that is like it's super strict you know what i'm saying like and it's like that at most mostly all clubs there are rules and guidelines that you have to follow as an employee whether you're the cook or the dancer or bouncer or server bartender whatever like we have rules it's not just like a free-for-all in there people just run around acting crazy or whatever whatever you know it's not like that at all okay so i'm gonna do the the do's and don'ts of the club and most of these do's and don'ts really um I'm gonna do it from a, a different bunch of different standpoints. As far as being a server, you don't have a section. So if you see one girl check up on a dude earlier and you walk over there and check up on him, as far as my understanding, there really isn't an issue. Um, people are gonna tip what they wanna tip, period. Whether you work in the nightclub or at a restaurant or whatever, people are gonna do what they wanna do regardless. A lot of people kinda have it in their head what they're gonna do or sometimes, I know I'm the type where I go I go to the strip club with a budget when I am hanging out and whoever get my last dollar is whoever was supposed to get my last dollar. I just say it like that. So um, there are no sections. We work upstairs and downstairs at this particular club. Um, you can work in pairs, you know what I'm saying? Like you can do whatever you need to do to work the floor, but there are people that do not want to walk to the bar whether they're in regular or VIP. They don't want to walk over there, so just go get them their drink or we sell like Rillos and stuff. Um, they're not gonna wanna walk over there to get a cigar. A lot of the times they don't even know that we sell the cigar. So they'll ask us how much it is. And if you don't know how much it is, just make up a number and just keep the extra money. <laughs> if you don't know how much it is, just, you know, you can go see how much it is or whatever, but nine times out of 10, the question is, do you sell the gassar, cigars? Do you sell cigars and how much are they? You know what I'm saying? Or like whatever, you know? Um, as far as, oh, if you're a server and you see a girl dancing on somebody, unless that customer calls you over there, nine times out of 10, it's better to steer clear of it. The only time that I really go towards dancers that are dancing like on the floor, not like on the pole or whatever, um, the only time I go towards the inside of dancing with a customer is when they have a lot of money on the floor and you know, usually it's like, you know, I'm gonna put a bag over here when you're ready for to have your money picked up, you know, hopefully another waitress will come help you pick it up if you're not done. Or um, they'll call you over there and be like, can you help pick up my money up? Or can you pick my money up or whatever, you know, if it's like a dumb, stupid amount of money, um, they'll, you know, they'll ask you for for help in terms of that. But nine times out of 10, I steer clear. Or, you know, I'll walk past them just to see if they need anything, like the dancers, not the customers, because bump the customer at this point. <laughs> to see if the dancer needs anything, and um, if they don't, then I'm all good. I'm just, you know, walking through. If I see money on the floor, that's like, if she's the only girl over here dancing, but there's like a lot of loose money, nine times out of ten, it's still her money, so I'm just gonna like scoop it up into her pile. But other than that, I'm just walking through making rounds. As a bartender, because I did bartend, at the club and serve as a bartender as soon as they step into the perimeter of the bar they're the bars if you're a server it's common sense to know that as soon as that person steps into the perimeter of the bar that you can no longer serve them as a floor customer at our bar we have like tile around the bar and then the carpet floor as soon as they step into the tile box it's over with that's you know the bar's customer at that point I'm trying to think of some other stuff i got there really isn't a means to be mean to anybody um like i said everybody that i've worked with is has been nice at both clubs here and peaches um when i sold hookah at peaches the majority of the people buying the hookah were the girls that were dancing so they would just be like you know i'll give you my money at the end of the night or i'll give you my money right now or hold on or you know just go fix my hookah or leave it right here make sure that nobody can smoke it you know that type of stuff but other than that they're really i really haven't dealt with any shady shifty people as far as being a, a server or a hookah girl or a bartender, I will say as a bartender, the dancers rely on you more because, you know, they need water and they need um, Red Bull or whatever. And if they get it, nine times out of ten, I've always been told that I'll be tips for whatever I give them. So 
I'm just gonna go because we're supposed to charge the dancers for like but they already pay a ridiculous amount of money to come and dance and then you know you can pay to dance on the pole and still not make no money by the end of the night you know what I'm saying depending on the crowd so I'm you know what I'm saying I, I gave a lot of stuff away at the bar if it wasn't alcohol I gave them lots of ice lots of water lots of Red Bull <laughs> or like sodas and stuff and they always tip me in return so I mean it's not like they couldn't afford not to you know give up a couple of things or whatever um as long as it wasn't the liquor i was good that's how i felt as long as it's not the liquor you're good um i will say my personal experience working in the club has been pretty much the same at both locations um i do have the guys that pull on me uh, ask me for things like grab me by the arm you know you're gonna have guys that want to touch you i've had guys mistake me for a dancer that's not what I do. I got a big fanny pack on. It's just the the product of the environment, I guess, is that people are gonna ask you for your number. I have met like some genuine people in the club, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not, I'm there to, like that's not my mind frame when I'm at work, it's like to talk to customers, even though, you know, part of the anesthetic of being at the club is, you know, being flirty or whatever, but I don't really do any of that. I just walk around <laughs> and ask people if they good. Um, like I said, I've never had anybody be rude to me, ever. I've never had anybody cuss me out. I've never had anybody call me out of my name, whether they be an employee or a customer. I've never had any of that. Um, I've had customers ask me to go find girls for them and stuff like that. But I've never had anything crazy happen to me at the club, ever. And to be honest, I've, I've probably had weirder things said to me at Hooters. No. I've actually had weirder things said to me at Hooters than I have had at the strip club. Um, the most e the most extravagant thing I've ever had said to me at the strip club is how much, and we just gonna throw that into the air that y'all know how much y'all know what he mean when he say how much. But like I had like some old dudes <laughs> at Hooters completely just be like over the top of me and it was like super uncomfortable so I got I've had that happen at Hooters and it was it was weird like it was really disgusting like I really don't even have a way to sum it all up that's YouTube friendly the way that I make money at the club because contrary to popular belief unless you are a dancer or you do work the bar it's still a regular service industry job so it's a uh, um most clubs are cash only they have atms on the inside or whatever but it's all cash handling so the way that i make my money most times especially with dealing with customers is if they ask for a drink or whatever i'll let them know how much the drink is up front because we do all transactions up front at this particular club or at any club we do all transactions up front and so i'll be like you know this is how much it is and I let them know how much it is and I look I watch them count their money and I can tell whether or not they put my tip in there or not most of the time the dudes put their tip or whoever it is the women dudes because girls tip more than guys do um they put their tip in the money that they give you to go take to the bar to get their drink once you tell them how much it is um there have been a few times where I have had dudes be like okay well I'm going to give you um money after the fact you know what i'm saying so like they'll tip me again after i bring them the drink i have had guys in there that have been anti-dancer and literally have just been like okay i'm gonna tip you instead of tipping the dancers because they have like this personal vendetta against dancers which i i don't know i'm all workers are workers and I feel like all workers should be paid for their work so that I'm just gonna put that out there so um, they'll tip me instead of tip the girls which you know you get it how you live like you know it's not as dog eat dog or as cutthroat as like TV or whatever will make it seem but it is pretty like aggressive like you have to figure it out more so than anything without begging people to give you money you know what I'm saying so I do have guys that come in there and they're literally like, you know, I'm just going to tip you. So they'll tip me like maybe $20 all together. I won't get it all at one time, but they'll, every time they see me, they'll hand me money for me. Um, 
in another way, the biggest way for me that I've made a lot of money in the club is helping the dancers. So, like I mentioned earlier, if you got a girl that's dancing or two girls that's dancing or whatever and they have a dumbass amount of money on the floor and, you know, eventually they'll be like, okay, can you just leave a bag and come back or I'm not ready yet or whatever, whatever. And you'd be like, cool, and you lead them. And if you so happen to come back when they are ready and they are ready for you to put all the money in the bag, do that. <laughs> a lot of the girls will tip you um, right then and there. Some girls tip you at the end of the night. Some girls will tip you at the end of their actual first set or whatever. Like they, for the most part, I've never not been tipped for having a girl pick up their money. Um, even on stage, cause when I first started working at the club, we didn't have a stage sweeper. So it was the waitress's responsibility and it would be like a bunch of us in there. And so we would all like take turns sweeping the stage or picking up money that fell from upstairs to downstairs. Like it was like a, like a bar around the stage. We would like move all the chairs out the way pick up all the money that fell in like the crevices or whatever, flip the couches for them, like whatever we had to do, we would make sure we got all their money and they would tip us because that shit ain't easy. Um, <laughs> and actually this, the last time I worked, the stage sweeper actually tipped me because I was like one of the only girls helping her pick the money up from like in between the bars or whatever. And so she was just like, thank you so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so she tipped me that way and um like yeah I'm, i make the majority of my money helping the dancers out like if they need me to get them some water at the bar i got you boo or you know anything anything like that that's what i do and honestly it helps them remember my face because that's one thing you want to be on the inside wherever you work at you want to be the person that they see the most for the right thing okay so i want them to know my face i want them to ask for me i want them to you know send me to the, that girl that girl over there that bald headed girl or that girl with the because i did cut my hair another video another time that girl you know what i'm saying girl with the curly hair the girl with the long weave whatever whatever wig i got on that day that face you know know my face <laughs> but yeah that's one of the main ways that i make a lot of money at the club is by helping the girls out whenever they need help um i will say working at the club then versus working at the club now back then there were not that many girls on the floor um, and we were delegated a lot more responsibilities. We set the club up and we broke the club down every night, regardless of how many of us were left at the end of the night. It was our responsibility to do that, to clean up, all the type of stuff, set the alcohol and stuff up for the poles, and like, you know, we cleaned the, the whole um, store. <laughs> Basically, we cleaned the whole club upstairs and downstairs. When I was a bartender, we were responsible for keeping the bar stock. We had a walk-in fridge downstairs. We worked upstairs, you could, then they go the security guards to go downstairs and get you like your ice or whatever you needed for the night to be upstairs now they don't have any coolers or anything like that anymore they just have the, like the big coolers you put the ice in and stick the bottles in like at the gas station if that's what they had have now but when i was there in 2016 we had like actual coolers with the sliding doors and all of that it was messy back there but it was definitely you know a way to stay organized now we don't do cash exchange upstairs you have to go downstairs or to the front door to get your cash exchanged. Um, I kind of think that's kind of bogus because that's how I made a lot of my money upstairs doing the VIP bar because you don't have to wear, I mean, you don't you don't have to pay for any of your alcohol upstairs. I would get $1,000 at the beginning of my shift. At the end of my shift, I had to have $1,000. <laughs> but um, I would do cash exchange and that's literally how I made my money upstairs because I would give people this or that and they would just drop whatever and set my bucket. Um, I remember one night, I was doing just regular cash exchange stuff and I know that one guy had gave me $100 so I just gave him 101s. Well he gave me a couple hundred dollars actually. So I gave him his money in ones or whatever and I was making sure to keep everything organized at my bar because we didn't have a cash register and I was like you know constantly sending people downstairs to get my money or whatever and so it was like it wasn't the end of the night but it was almost the end of the night and I was um, looking in my bucket and I found a $100 bill and my tip jar, my tip bucket. And I was freaking out because I was like, oh my God, I don't want them to think I'm up here stealing money because I'm definitely not. And I remember like there was a guy who he was kind of rude to me, but he was coming up to the bar and he pretty much like drank me out of Corona Amber, like which is crazy, like him and his group of friends or whatever. And he was just kept saying like, I promise you I'm gonna tip you, like, you know, whatever, 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 just be cool with me, I'm gonna tip you. And I'd be like, yeah, I right, whatever, because any of my other customers, after your third beer, if you haven't tipped me, I'm not giving you anything else until you tip me. 
which is another reason why I do like working in the strip club. You can bullshit with your customers and talk a little bit of shit to them um, without really getting in trouble. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's all fun. So nobody is acting crazy towards you, per se. But, um, so yeah, so you know what I'm saying? Like, he was, he wasn't being mean to me or rude to me or nothing like that. But I'm, the only thing I can think of is the fact that it was him that put that money in there because I he never put anything in my tip jar and there comes point in times where there's like a rush of this money constantly going in the tip bucket and you just passing out whatever and you're not really paying attention so I'm thinking that it was him that did it but I found that $100 bill and it really freaked me out and so we split with the um the upstairs bar and downstairs bar I don't know if they still do it now but the upstairs bar and downstairs bar would tip with tip share all together and so we would end up um that night i think we all ended up like leaving with like three or four hundred dollars a piece but that extra hundred dollar in my tip jar definitely helped all of us make money <laughs> because that was one of the nights where literally like everybody was upstairs like in vip it was so packed i couldn't see anything i couldn't see outside of my bar because it was just nothing but like rows and rows of people so um yeah <laughs> but um i know that now they really don't do that so i think that that's kind of bogus so they don't have cash exchange upstairs anymore but um I'm trying to think that's pretty much it like um those are the experiences that i had in the club it's not too crazy for me it's like any other job the only thing that makes a difference is the fact that there are naked women everywhere and you can pretty much be naked too um <laughs> but uh that's that's it that that's that's it it's really not as it, i feel like it's not as exciting as people want to make it seem like working in the club is but it's not you know sometimes it's fast paced sometimes it's slow paced the fact that there are a hundred girls on the floor now makes a, a huge amount of difference in the amount of money that i was used to making on the floor like it may be like me and my sister maybe one other girl on the floor and we would all make between like 16 and 80 dollars a night which is okay i mean it's mississippi it's okay but now we are making our tip out back which is five dollars <laughs> so we may make like twenty dollars that night like it's crazy now but um it's something to do on the weekends honestly for me so uh yeah that's pretty much it make sure you rate comment and subscribe click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time that i post a video and um yeah, make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Hannah Burnell W, no underscores, decimals, periods, spaces, none of that is legit. Just at Hannah Burnell W, this it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.